Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are testing out two big air coolers designed for use with AMD's new Threadripper CPUs. Here we have one big air cooler and here we have one bloody massive air cooler. The question is, which one works better? To answer that very question, I am going to be comparing their cooling performance on the 32 core Threadripper 2990WX as both these air coolers were developed with that monstrous processor in mind. In fact, earlier this year at Computex 2018, we sort of caught wind that AMD would be announcing some bigger, beefier second gen Threadripper CPUs because of these coolers, they kind of gave it away, at least they did for us. Uh, we knew it wasn't going to be just the architectural refinements that we saw on the Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5 parts for the desktop, the six and eight core mainstream models. And this is because Cooler Master and Deep Cool were flaunting these new coolers at the Computex trade show, claiming that they could handle up to 250 watt processors. And given that the 1950X is only uh, that slap with 180 watt TDP, if I'm not mistaken, we knew something was up there because there was no way that the 2950X, if it was still to just be a 16 core processor, which evidently it is, it would have a 250 watt rating. That just didn't seem likely. And then of course, the next day, AMD did announce the 2990WX, the world's first 32 core desktop CPU and these things all started to make sense. For my initial 2990WX coverage, I used the Wraith Ripper for the first time and found remarkably low operating temperatures, just 59 degrees after an hour long stress test, though it was a little noisy with the 120 millimeter fan spinning at between 2300 and 2600 RPM. Nothing too excessive, and given the results, the operating volume was acceptable. The plan was to revisit the Wraith Ripper in more detail after my initial 2990WX coverage, but as usual, something more pressing came along and well, in this case, I never actually got back to it. Well, that is until now, of course. But with the recent arrival of Fryzen, I thought what better time than to test two big old air coolers than right now. Before we jump into the results, let's just take a quick look at each cooler and I will start with the Wraith Ripper as we're quite familiar or reasonably familiar with this product having already tested it in our day one coverage. Obviously, it's an absolutely massive cooler. It measures 150 millimeters wide, 132 millimeters deep, and it is 161 millimeters tall. And it tips the scales at 1,607 grams. And you might think, okay, well, a good amount of those dimensions are probably fans. But in the case of this cooler, it's actually mostly heatsink. The Wraith Ripper packs just a single 120 millimeter fan sandwiched between the dual tower style heatsink, and it's rated to operate between zero and 2700 RPM. The heatsink and heat pipes, of which there are many, but I'll get to that in a moment. Then the heatsink and heat pipes have been painted black and Cooler Master says the black paint enhances radiation cooling performance. It's commonly understood that black or dark surfaces absorb heat rather than reflect it as lighter colored surfaces tend to do. However, the same principle applies for heat dissipation as it works the other way as well. So a black surface will indeed dissipate heat more efficiently than a lighter colored surface. In the case of the Wraith Ripper, we're probably talking only a few percent, but hey, that's better than nothing. And as a bonus, it looks really tough. Adding to the Wraith Ripper's toughness factor are seven heat pipes that weave their way through the base plate. It's a seriously busy looking cooler. The base plate, of course, offers full TR4 coverage measuring 45 millimeters by 72 millimeters. Then capping off the design is a plastic cover that wraps around both sides and encases the 120 millimeter fan. The internal fan doesn't feature any RGB lighting, rather it's been migrated to the plastic cover. And I have to admit, it does look pretty awesome. There are two translucent strips that run from one side up over the top of the cooler and then down the opposite side. And Cooler Master has allowed the RGB lighting to be controlled via software and they supply a utility design specifically to work with the Wraith Ripper. Then the key to it all, the easiest installation process ever. That's what Cooler Master claims and they're bang on. There are four screw heads in the top of the cooler. Simply align it with the TR4 socket, fasten the screws and you're done. It's an absolutely brilliant design. The only issue I see with this product is the price, and then I suppose the poor availability. Uh, despite getting my hands on one of these for testing in my day one coverage over a month ago now, they don't appear to be on sale in the US yet. I've seen them listed on Amazon, but it says currently unavailable, so not sure when they will be available. Lots of you guys keep asking me when will it be available, and I don't seem to be able to get any solid information on that. Oddly though, there are a few select retailers in Australia that have stock and are selling them for 
an insane $210 Aussie. So that means for less Mauler, you can grab the Corsair Hydro Series H115i or the Deep Cool Castle 280, for example. The suggested retail price is $120 US, so as usual, the Australian price does appear to be quite heavily inflated, but even so, the Wraith Ripper is still a seriously expensive air cooler. So at least in terms of pricing, it appears to be Advantage Deep Cool, as the Fryzen is coming in at $90 US and is currently available at that price. So it's available in the US, not available in Australia yet, so sort of the opposite situation here. I expect it to come in at about 130 to 140 Aussie if we're not seeing any kind of crazy Australia tax on that one. In any case, this is still a very expensive air cooler, so it will need to perform if we are to seriously consider it. I have to say, while a nice looking cooler, it seems rather underwhelming sitting next to the Wraith Ripper. It's a much smaller cooler measuring 124 millimeters wide, 82 millimeters deep and 165 millimeters tall. That being the case, it weighs 36% less at 1036 grams. So still a heavy CPU cooler, but also quite light when compared to the behemoth that is the Wraith Ripper. Still, Deep Cool isn't messing around. Might sound like it, the cooler is named Fryzen after all, but this is a serious contender. The cooler features a super thick copper base plate with full TR4 coverage measuring 46 millimeters wide, 68 millimeters deep, and it's also 15 millimeters thick. Then extracting heat from the base, we have half a dozen six millimeter thick copper heat pipes, and they snake their entire way through the base plate, extending out both sides up through the fin stack. Deep Cool says the heat pipes are in a boot shape and this provides faster heat dissipation. I did notice that some of the bends are less aggressive than those of the heat pipes used by the Wraith Ripper. Pushing air over the heatsink is a 120mm hydro bearing fan that's designed to operate between 500 and 1800 RPM. Improving the build quality here and adding a bit of flair at the same time is an all aluminium fan frame. The frame looks great, it's highly unique and it's all aluminium construction means it's extremely durable. I really like the silver textured finish and the embedded RGB lighting looks impressive as well. Speaking of RGB lighting, in addition to the fan frames highlights, we also find a dark tinted top panel and this is backlit with a light bar and the GamerStorm logo. The RGB lighting is addressable and supports all major motherboard brands such as ASUS, ASRock, MSI and Gigabyte. Anyway, the Fryzen is a solid looking cooler. I'm just not quite sure how well it's going to stack up against the much larger Wraith Ripper, but of course that's what we're here to find out. Now, both of these coolers have been tested on the MSI X399 Creation motherboard using the Threadripper 2990WX, both stock and overclocked, and I will be reporting the idle and stress temperatures of both the CPU, along with the motherboard's VRM, which will be fed air only by the CPU cooler. For the stress test, I'll be using a blender workload, which will be running for an hour, at which point I will be reporting the peak temperature. Then after a 10 minute cooldown period, I will record the lowest temperature and report that as the idle result. So let's get into the numbers. Okay, so first up we have the stock results and very surprisingly, Fryzen kept the 2990WX two degrees cooler than the Wraith Ripper in our stress test and just a degree cooler at idle. Now this is an average from three test runs, but even so I would allow for at least a one degree margin of error, possibly a one to two degree margin of error. Also the ambient temperature was closely monitored at between 21 and 22 degrees. Anyway, under these conditions, it's very clear that both coolers deliver very similar results. And I should note that the fan speed was fixed at 1900 RPM for both coolers, as I found the auto fan speed setting on the MSI X39 creation uh, did at times skew the results, and the Wraith Ripper was a bit loud when the fan was allowed to spin up to 2600 RPM. Also, using the auto fan speed setting, the Verizon cooler spun its fan at just 1300 to 1400 RPM under load, while the Wraith Ripper was much more aggressive, as I said, going up well over 2000 RPM. So it wasn't exactly a fair comparison. What I found really interesting was, although the CPU temperature was very much the same, the difference in VRM temp was massive. Now, this won't necessarily reflect the kind of performance you'll see on all motherboards, but it is what you'll see on the MSI X399 creation, assuming no direct airflow over the VRM by any other means, such as a top-mounted case fan, for example. I believe the Wraith Ripper suffers in this test due to its size. The air exiting the cooler is directed above the VRM heatsink as the cooler overhangs the nearest memory modules. The much narrower Fryzen cooler allows the air more room to dissipate, and this provides much more direct airflow over the VRM heatsink. As you can see, this had a huge impact on temperatures, allowing the VRM to operate 11 degrees cooler with Fryzen. 
Again, this may not be the case for all configurations, but on the X399 creation with limited airflow over the motherboard, these are the results we received. Both coolers did deliver excellent CPU temperatures though, so let's move on to see how they handle the 2990WX overclocked to 4GHz using 1.25 volts. With the 2990WX now overclocked, we see an almost 20% increase in operating temperature, and surprisingly, Verizon is again a few degrees cooler than the Wraith Ripper. Here we see just two degrees separates these air coolers. The Verizon is clearly better in our test, but the difference is very small. This time we do see much similar VRM temperatures, though again, Verizon is also better here, allowing the X399 creation to run four degrees cooler under load. Again, adding a case fan to direct airflow over the VRM would probably eliminate this performance difference, but in situations where the motherboard sees limited airflow, Verizon will likely allow for better performance. Then finally, we have this unrealistic extreme stress test where feeding the 2990WX 1.4 volts to put maximum load on the CPU cooler and the VRM. This sees Verizon and the Wraith Ripper basically delivering the same performance. Verizon was a degree cooler, but that is within our margin of error. There's also just a two degree difference for the VRM temperature now as well. Okay, so those results I have to say were very surprising. I was expecting the much bigger and heavier Wraith Ripper to dominate Verizon, but as we saw, that wasn't the case. I've also recently just got my hands on a retail version of the Wraith Ripper. For testing, I used the version provided with my review kit for the 2990WX and 2950X. So I retested with the uh, retail version just after finishing all the initial testing and confirmed that there's no real changes with this particular version. The base was noticeably smoother for the retail version, but temperatures were within a degree of what's reported here. I have to say though, getting a retail version of both these coolers hasn't exactly been easy, and even today, availability is still very poor. For now, I think it's safe to say that performance is very similar. Depending on conditions, one might come out a few degrees ahead of the other. And again, I should just note that the fans were locked at a maximum fan speed of 1900 RPM for the test done in this video. And that was just to normalize the operating volume and limit it to what I consider to be a tolerable level. As I mentioned earlier in the review, on auto, the Wraith Ripper wanted to spin up to 2600 RPM, and here it was quite loud, louder than what I would want to live with. At that speed, I'd rather just get an all-in-one liquid cooler, which is arguably also cheaper. So for testing, I did lock the fan speed for the Wraith Ripper at 63%, which saw a peak temp of 87 degrees in our 1.4 volt stress test. But at full fan speed, the temperature did drop to 78 degrees. Of course, if we allowed Fryzen to spin its fan at full speed, you'd also see a similar drop in temperature. So I guess the only question remaining now is which cooler should you buy? As usual, that one is a little bit difficult to answer as they both have their individual strengths, but there is one metric that we can discuss that makes the choice a whole lot easier, and that is, of course, the price. The $120 US MSRP of the Wraith Ripper makes it one mighty expensive air cooler. After all, the $90 US price for the Fryzen, that's not the MSRP, that's the current retail price, and that still makes this cooler very expensive. We just didn't see a little over 30% more value in the Wraith Ripper cooler. I can understand why it costs that much more to produce, but sadly it doesn't translate into better performance. In a nutshell, the advantages of the Wraith Ripper include the dead easy installation process and the beefy but attractive appearance. The advantage of Fryzen is that it's more compact and provides greater compatibility. It's obviously cheaper, but performance is comparable, and it's a universal cooler that can be used on all current AMD and Intel platforms. So that makes it much more flexible should you change to a different platform in the future. Personally, I do prefer the look of the Wraith Ripper, but be aware it is an absolutely massive cooler if you haven't noticed already. And because of that, it is a bit of a hog. It will hide your motherboard, so it does hog the uh, look of your build somewhat. So if you are trying to build a showy build that shows off all the components, then you may not like the fact that the cooler hides pretty much most of the top section of the motherboard. And then of course, when you have a graphics card in that sort of hides that section of the board. So in the build I did with this cooler, you didn't see much of the MSI X399 creation, but still, Overall, a great looking cooler. Really love the RGB effects. Even those of you who don't really like RGB lighting, I think you'll agree that it does look quite good on this cooler. The Verizon cooler also looks great in my opinion, but I do prefer the Wraith Ripper if I had to pick one of them purely on looks, but still a good looking cooler. Overall though, Verizon is just a more sensible product in 
pretty much every way. It's cheaper, uh, performs just as well. It has universal platform support. That's a really important feature. If you decide to change platforms or whatever, you can keep your rather expensive air cooler. Uh, greater compatibility with memory, so you can have taller memory and not have the heat sink block that and cause problems for you. And it also doesn't block the primary PCIe slot on most of the X399 motherboards. So, Taking all that into consideration, I would recommend Deep Cool's Fryzen. And on a final note, coming up on the channel soon, I will be adding more coolers to the mix. So testing more coolers on the 2990WX to hit them with a maximum stress test. I'll be adding more air coolers and some all-in-one liquid coolers as well. And I'll be doing that in an effort to work out what is the best value, best performing a cooler for your second gen Threadripper workstation. For now though, that is going to do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button for us, subscribe for more content. If you appreciate the work we do here at Harbour Unboxed, then consider supporting us on Patreon. But as always, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I will see you again next time.